All right, so the question we're doing today from geeksforgeeks.org um, is design YouTube slash Netflix, a global streaming video streaming service. Design a video streaming service like YouTube slash Netflix where users can upload videos, upload, view, search videos. So that's important. Um, right off the bat, I would probably want to write that down. Or, you know, I'll have my computer in front. So actually, you know, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good practice. Let's write it down. So upload, view, search are three main functionalities, right? Uh, the server should be scalable, where a large number of users can watch and share the videos simultaneously. So let's just take these po as bullet points. High volume load. Um, simultaneous. Simultaneous for the same video. Um, and it will be storing and transmitting petabytes and petabytes of data. Just tons of data. Um, I see some things to discuss and analyze, but before I even get there, let's, let's say, um, you know, the, the interviewer just leaves me with that. So... I mean, first let's let's clarify. Um, this is this is designing all of YouTube slash Netflix a global video streaming surface, um, especially since they mention upload. I'm gonna kind of take the more YouTube example where, um, like in Netflix, you know, your casual user isn't uploading, but YouTube has a lot more uploading going on. So let's let's assume that's the case. Um, so so where do we begin? Um, so let's just start with the servers, right? Naturally, well, uh, let's, let's continue to clarify input. Um, they've actually given us a lot, I feel like. I mean, with this, you know, it's endless, but um, they give specific APIs that it should handle, high volume load. Um, they specifically say that's gonna be tons of data. Um, and we we can make some assumptions that you know this is going to let's let, well actually let's let so let's actually make some assumptions let's uh, refine confine some of the strengths uh, such as devices let's say this is all in uh, a modern day web browser so there is less uh, less like app like app specific uh, advantages we can we can use. Uh, less things we can take, uh, like device advantages, because um, when you have a first party device, you're able to access a lot more of the processing power, for example, um, than, uh, uh, you, than most browsers would. So let's, let's just start with the server, right? So I'm just gonna draw out a diagram here, but right from the center, we just have the server. And visually, it's just one. Or I'll like, you know, add some like stacks in the back, but very obviously this is a distributed server, right? Um, naturally, we will need, I mean, these are parts, this is just like the, the starting, starting portion of any, any, any web application, but uh, we're gonna need a, a backend in terms of database. And obviously, for this, um, our data is not what is the video itself isn't really one that's meant to be stored in a database. It's more uh, meant to be stored on its own, and it'll be referenced to like the uh, it'll be referenced from the database, as in you know a URL. Um, but separately, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark this as separate on the on this diagram here. Um, as just storage because knowing that we are going to be storing this much data and streaming this much data means we should be taking advantage of, uh, of systems that cost less to do this. 
and it costs less to store this much data. Um, just, you know, off the bat, uh, there is probably a imbalance, uh, not an equal spread of how how often these videos are accessed, right? Um, some, you know, uh, your your YouTube, your average YouTuber may upload a video and it gets absolutely zero views or like one view every nine months. We can put that in a colder long-term storage that's a little slower to retrieve from uh, that probably costs less than something that's highly available. Um, so we're, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead into optimizations already. Um, let's just kind of like talk about the components in this system and then we will uh, break down e individual little bits like how I mentioned there's the database but we don't really know what it does yet. Um, so we've got servers, we've got storage, we've got the DB. Each one of these is going to be distributed, uh, is going to have um, like uh, like back backups, uh, redundancy uh, areas of availability. Um, and I, I don't know if this is even worth men, uh, like each one should be behind its own its own load balancer. Um, it you don't want to create hotspots where uh, a server particular uh, a server particularly queries one database uh, one database server or uh, one particular storage server. Uh, ideally. Behind the scenes, um, a request to a server will get rerouted to the most available database or the most available storage uh, system. Um, so out of these three, then we just have the users, right? We got millions of users. I'm gonna just kind of draw a computer. This is the end client and it makes requests to our server. So what kind of APIs need to be available here. Obviously, we know there's the upload view. And uh, what was the last one? Search. Each one of these is, is heavily loaded. Um, I th let's, I think, talk about maybe the easiest ones first or the most uh, straightforward ones. So I think view might be the easiest, assuming this this video is already uh, on the server, has already been uploaded, and you know, it's already being referenced in the database. What happens when you when you view when the client, the end user goes to a URL in the browser, and expects to see this video? Well, obviously in the URL, we'll need something to be identifying, right? Um, a specific ID, a specific key, um, not human readable uh, generally, that contains uh, a specific identifier to a video, right? So I'm gonna say view um, URL has specific identifier. When and I'm I'm gonna cut down a lot of features here. Let's uh, at least for we can I'm sure we have if we have time, but we can continue talking about like expansions and making it more and more like YouTube. Uh, make it more and more like YouTube. I need to talk a little slower. We can make it more and more like YouTube, but let's try to meet the basic functionalities that we were given. The URL has a specific identifier. That's a given as part of the input, and um, in the so when the server gets that it will query the database uh, asking where is the video file. Uh, 
Um, then it'll query the storage. And what does it to do here? It obviously isn't going to retrieve the entire video file. These could be, uh, even if, like we don't want to make any assumptions about how big the video is, right? So it, so what we'll likely want to do is give a response from the server to the client saying, hey, here's where you can, uh, you can access the file, the video. And within, within the client's browser, you know, through JavaScript or something, uh, it establishes a stream and begins streaming from storage. I'm going to say client's computer streams from storage. I need to get a different pen. I'm kind of running out of ink in this one. I, let's see. All right, so the absolute most basic of basic views is done. Is, is that's how it should work at least, right? Um, what about upload? So this is probably the second, like a little more complex than view, but not as complex as search. Um, upload, so. I think in terms of system design, I don't know. Well, I don't. So I don't know if we how how much we want to get into the database design itself. Um, I'm gonna assume my interview. I was like, well, let's let's do it. Let's let's talk about the database design. Um, and if so, we need to start talking about the database layer here, right? Um, Let's still keep it extremely simple uh, and say the upload video, the upload, like the database where we store the reference to these videos. So we're going to need an ID. And I'm going to say this is a UUID, um, something generated to uniquely identify the video, right? There's an ID, and that will be our primary key. We'll definitely have a reference, uh, the URL that references the video. Let's say video path, or I don't path makes it feel local. Video, yeah, URL is really what it is. Um, and I know I said like we'll keep it extremely simple right now. But I imagine there will be the uploader. Uh, there'll be a lot of other like kind of metadata um, uploader, which would be which would be a foreign key to the up, uh, users table. Um, date time uploaded, um, and depending on on the features, there could be a lot more data stored here. Um, just thinking to YouTube, examples would be like, uh, um, what's its rating? Uh, like, you know how many thumbs up or thumbs down it has. Um, maybe a reference to another table that holds uh, subscribers. And um, tons of other metadata, like comments, a, co a comment table, things like that. But we're going to keep it just to these, strictly to these three use cases we were given. I didn't even read, like I think this, I said there was something to discuss and analyze, but I didn't even uh, talk about that quite yet. Uh, and finally, search. Search is really interesting um, because while we could and probably would store some keywords, maybe like limit it to like 10 keywords you can, you can associate or categories, 
you can associate with your uh, with your video. Um, what we probably want to use is some like indexing or, or like search platform, search library um, that probably works in its own box and we can feed it data. And um, when a user uploads the video and puts in the title, tag some categories. Um, if we had the ability, we could also run it through a uh, natural language processing um, and use all this info as input to the search indexer. Um, I think this is the most difficult to talk about abstractly. And there's probably other like I, it, that that's it. It's just like I'd, I'd use a library and just depending on each library's constraints and how to use them. Um, that's what I'd go off of. Uh, like some of them will, you, you know, need to use uh, their own database. Some of them will, will use yours and they'll just store info that's that's hashed. Um, and let, let's say it's a database you have access to, or like let's 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 say it's a black box, right? Um, when the user does type in, so we'll we'll need an, uh, another new endpoint. Right now, all we have the only real endpoint we des we've defined on our server is like slash video or like to load a specific video ID. Um, we need a new endpoint that supports search. We take in inputs, um, which are the search terms and we're black boxing it. I'm going to say that you you put these inputs into this this library or the service and uh, it'll return to you potential videos in a list and we will render the first 10 and you know paginate over the other results. So that's the basics of how these three would work. Um, along with the storage and the server, there's tons of things that we, we like can dive deeper into. So is there an area, maybe I'd probably ask here, is there an area that um, the interviewer is curious about? Um, because I can definitely speak like in an abstract sense, a lot of ways these, that we could make improvements. So for example, the storage, right? Right now, I did say there's like redundancy and it's like a more of a cold or like a slower, uh, it's, it's being stored separately from our database and our, our actual server. But in reality, it'd be tiered. Um, I think I gave that example earlier where I said, um, someone who uploads a video but has no subscribers, no, no viewers, no, someone only watches it once every nine months. That need that can have a different availability uh, as the others. So really, our storage system isn't just a distributed identical copies of, of the storage uh, of the storage server, but um, we'd probably have a top layer that, similar to you know RAM in memory on a PC. Uh, it's like highly available, really efficient, super fast, and it contains all the most popular videos, the most popular, just like, you know, on any uh, trending on YouTube or top, top 10 videos uh, currently playing. It has these available without doing any sort of lookup. It could even be in memory. Like the, it could just have a gigantic memory, um, super, super expensive, of course, but it can just instantly start streaming these. Um, whereas, you know, the older video that gets only one view every nine months, um, doesn't, it, it stores it in just an example in AWS, like Glacier or in like an S3 bucket. Um, and it will slowly have to retrieve that and, and stream it to the, uh, to the end user. Um, And I, so I did say that, you know, the computer directly st streams it from the storage, but in reality, we will need us a, a layer over. And maybe that's something we can talk about. Like that's one, a point to, to, to cover at least to, to mention. Um, 
presumably you don't want to get like DDoS attacked. You don't want people just loading humongous videos and just wasting your time. So you can limit it to, to users, right? It's some sort of authentication. Um, so there the user would not be calling the server directly, uh, the storage directly, it'd be calling an in-between server. And the reason I'd have this differently than our main web server um, is because the web server is, is handling all different types of queries, you know, like going to the homepage, doing these searches. Um, the fact, the fact that we need a very specific type of server, um, we were, it's only going to like its main, its primary duty is just to stream from the storage to the end user means we can build for that. We can choose, you know, the right specs for that, um, to optimize its usage. We don't need to take up a bunch of resources. Like you you either, you know, you either, you either special, you either build a specialty system or you build a multi-purpose system and a lot of web apps do multi-purpose. You know, you can, you can push them data. You can do all sorts of queries. You can connect them to all different types of services. But when you have a specific use case like this, um, you've already, you've already, you know, the video you're trying to get to, you have, you have the ID of the reference, you know, the user's logged in, they, they already have some sort of like cookie or, um, yeah, some security token, um, JWT, whatever. Um, and all this thing needs to do is say, okay, yeah, this, this is good. Now stream them this video. We can build for that and be much more efficient. I guess that was the word I was looking for efficient. Um, so like, I mean, I'll just add that to my diagram. Basically we will need still need like a special specialized server. Uh, around that storage. Um, that's what, so that's one way. It's, the whole point of this was to say that there is like some way to, uh, how to make, how to make very high demand videos more available. And then that's how we got to like kind of the multi-tiered storage. Um, and I'm just going to now look, go back to the actual prompt and see things to analyze and discuss. Approach to record stats about videos, e.g. the total number of views, upvotes, downvotes, etc. And as well as adding comments on videos in real time. Adding comments in real time. I, I don't know if they mean on top of the video, because like in real time is just a very strange way of saying it. Do they mean you can, sub do you mean you can, uh, so I guess to my interviewer, do you mean you can submit a comment without the, vi like the page refreshing? Or do you mean like, yeah, I'd like you to, can, can you, can you clarify that a bit? Um, I'm going to assume that's what it means. Like, you can you can send in a comment and maybe the other person can view the comment like it pops up as a new comment while they're watching the video maybe that's what they mean by real time oh like like twitch when people uh, talk on a stream uh I, I basically what i'm trying to clarify here is it's still separate from the video like it could still be an overlay on the video like twitch or um in the bottom of the page but but does it need to be like tied to the time of the video or like when you replay it or something? Uh, like, does it need to persist with the video when it was commented? So I guess this is kind of difference between like um, live streaming and just a video. Uh, I'm gonna take the more classic YouTube interpretation, but I think we could always, uh, sorry, I had to stretch. Um, I think we could always expand uh, for the live commenting like on Twitch. So, well, the, okay, the first prompt was approach to record stats about videos. Right. E.g. total number of views, upvotes, downvotes, etc. Um, I mean, given our still limited use case, the table we talked about, which had the ID, which was the unique, or the, the, the primary key was the unique video ID, 
those can really just be col uh, columns in that right now, right? Um, without comments, at least, it doesn't need to be relational. That, that's, that's, a, that's an empirical number, right? However, maybe you want to keep track of uh, which users it was that, up, uh, that upvoted it, which, uh, view, viewer, which users have viewed it, etc. And in that case, I mean, yes, you, will, you, you need to use um, more tables. Um, for each of these simple for the use cases is pretty simple. You'd have a, a table like video views um, where the primary key would be in the case of so if we don't mind duplicates like if we actually want so this is a clarifying question. Would we want to count? Uh, if a user has watched it five times, do we want that to be five counts? And I assume that's how it works on YouTube. Um, so we actually do need separate entries. Um, I mean, it, 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 so it, it continues to, the, how much data do we want? Do we need to know that once he watched it in October, once he watched it in November? then you really do need separate entries on every single, um, like you need a primary key of, of video ID, user, and like timestamp, right? But if we didn't need that, if, you, if, if just knowing that he watched it five times was enough, you could just have video ID, user, count. We know views never go down. There's like presumably no use case for that. So we can just add one to that count every single time the user makes. So every, yeah, let's let's actually go through the flow. In the user's browser, they hit enter. They enter the, the video URL or click on it. Um, the server requests. The server receives. You know, the web server, web app receives the request, queries the database, say, "Hey, where can I load? Where can I tell this user to stream the video from?" Um, that is. We have a few choices here, but you know, around there is when we uh, we can up the view count. Um, I guess if we want to be the most accurate, we can. Um, we can do it just before. So the, the okay, so the server re returns uh, saying, "Hey, here's the URL that you uh, that you need to stream the video from," and the user's browser connects to that. Specialized server. I can actually, my drawing is horrible, but it connects that specialized server that's around the storage. And if we want the most accurate number, then like around here is where we would probably increase the number. That there's actually been a stream established between the user's browser and uh, the server that's serving the content. Um, and maybe we need, even need to take it one step further. It may even need to be a callback, like after the stream is established and uh, like the client, the clients, the computer has actually received a 200 and has started streaming. If we don't mind missing some counts, potentially, maybe like it really matters that the, the customer absolutely had to have seen this video um, for ads. You, want, you need to say, you need to be 100% sure you're charging this company to, show, to display their ads. You need to be sure that they actually saw this ad, um, then you would do the callback. And yes, you would get some, there may be some discrepancies where the user like disables their JavaScript or has some blocking scripts or even just disconnects just immediately before getting the response back from the specialized server. Uh, you will miss those counts, but maybe that's, that is what you need. That meets the needs of, of your ad program. Right, uh, and the same thing. The same thing goes for upvotes and downvotes. Um, if you actually need to track with a user, which I'm sure YouTube obviously does, um, because if you if you upvote if you upvote something and then you refresh the page, obviously they know you upvoted at last. Um, this table could be a little simpler though. Uh, at its simplest, it could just be video ID user and vote 
and vote uh, would be like an enum with three values if you're including the null slash empty case, um, but upvote or downvote. Um, there's, there's metadata that can be associated with every single one of these, by the way, such as uh, time, the time this, this action was performed. Um, I don't know, the browser they submitted it from. There's just random stuff, but I, I'm focusing on the functionality, and I assume uh, I'm leaving those out for now. Um, unless, like, if, you give a, if, you give, if a PM were to give a use case, of course, like we could add it to our table. It's all about balancing like over design and uh, over over engineering and not right. Just like the counts that I was talking about for the video, uh, for if you watch a video five times, do you actually need to know every single time the customer has seen the video, uh, like the the timestamp of when it happened? Of course, there are use cases for that. Um, maybe you're doing like uh, company corporate training videos, and you need to know the last times they've seen this video uh, for legal purposes. Um, then you might actually want a separate entry. You can't just store a counter. So, you know, your design just has to meet the needs. If you over-design, you're also using up your resources, the physical, like, per personnel resources. You know, they're building this program for you, but also the system resources. You're storing extra data. You're making your... There's a heavier payload. There's more business logic about updating it, etc. cetera. Um, and adding comments on videos in real time. So here I would, I, I would clarify what real time really means. Um, it, we, the method I may advocate for is um, occasionally the customer's browser, maybe every five seconds, 10 seconds, uh, sends a request to the server to see if there are any new comments since the last time that they requested, right? So they would they would probably provide a timestamp saying, okay, right, here's the last, here's the last, here's a timestamp from the last comment, the last time I checked. Um, the server could limit its queries to a, a comment database. Um, so, well, okay, let's actually make, let's let's clarify this a little more. What, what are the inputs to the service to the to this API? Uh, one is of course the video ID. One would be, uh, I mean, there's metadata like who is the user, but time things like that. But I'm going to ignore that. Uh, time of last. Um, and we can start out this number being like the current time when the page is loaded and you first load the comments that will that'll be the first time of the time of last query right and then from then on every five or x seconds we'll say hey we're storing this locally on the browser uh, since this is real time I'm, I'm saying it's just being stored in a javascript variable um, and we're like, hey, the, like five seconds ago, here's the timestamp from five seconds ago. Um, are there any new new videos, or new comments, sorry. Then the server can query the database and provide those constraints saying, hey, in just the, in, in the comment table where we were gonna store timestamp, anything greater than the timestamp that was passed in, that was five seconds ago, um, are there any results? And if there are, return them to the front end, right? the, pay the payload, the actual comment. Um, yeah. What else? What are like possible expansions here? If I were just gonna spitball. Um, it definitely helps to, to draw on how we know YouTube works. So um, the fact that they support different, like if they know your browser, your internet speed isn't that fast, they will downgrade your video quality, right? 
from 720p to 480 or something. Uh, so in this case, we could, we would need multiple copies of each version of this, this video, right? Um, like a 480p version. Actually, that's not necessarily true, but I'm trying to avoid like on the fly processing of a video. Like, uh, I don't know how cheap that is. So that's something I would like want to look into um, and weigh the cost. Is it cheaper to, like if I have a, a video in 4K, is it cheaper to have copies of it in 4K, 1080p, 720, 480? Or is it cheaper to use processing power to downgrade it on the fly before I send it from my specialized server to the customer? Um, so that's one way we can optimize the experience on the customer side, right? Um, because generally speaking, loading the video is not is better than not is like loading the video with minimal buffering is better than uh, improved quality. And we can give them that option, of course, just like how YouTube does, you can force a higher quality. But um, I think, you know, the default is auto, auto select for me. Um, when we stream to save resources on on the server's end, on, on our end, the, you know, the web app's end, um, I'm not too familiar with the video streaming, like libraries or, you know, how the browser does it. But I would look into how to limit the buffering so that it only buffers, you know, one, two, some, some, something, some settable uh, amount of data or time, either five minutes worth of data uh, or, you know, 10 megabytes worth of data, something like that uh, at a time so that if the computer, uh, so that, you know, if the, if the user loads a four, four hour video and their internet is super fast, our internet is super fast because we're Google, um, we don't, but they don't actually plan, we don't know if they plan on watching the whole video, right? Maybe they're just, maybe they've already seen one hour and they just plan on skipping the first hour going to the second. Um, from the, from the user's end, uh, we want to not request too much data. Um, we'd also probably want to, to, to track this and check this on the our server end, of course, as well. Um, and also we'd update our APIs to do things like jumping around, um, like start from here. So you like start from hour one so that our, uh, and pass that in as an input so that our, our servers aren't trying to load the video from minute zero to hour one to even start. Um, and to do that, we'll, we'll probably need to break up the video um, into multiple chunks. And that's, that's like a whole other thing that our storage, the specialized server that wraps around our storage, um, like maybe this is something it could do where it could talk to, to, talk to our database layer um, and say, oh yeah, here, here, I need to like combine these chunks to, for each, uh, each chunk of the video that I need to load. Um, that's going back to the kind of the requirements, like always, I always come back to the requirements. I think that's super important. Um, it's easy to get caught up in what you think is right or like the problems that you run into as a developer, but to do your job well, I think you need to make sure it meets the, the requirements that were given, right? I mean, everyone's human. Their requirements are not going to be perfect or absolute. And that's, and the, the, the feedback should be given back to the, the product manager. But, um, but let's, let's say that you, you've already done this, right? So it, it let's, this is what they need. Then you make, need to make sure you build it to what they need. Um, so the requirements were the service should be scalable where a large number of users can watch and share the video simultaneously. It will be storing and transmitting petabytes and petabytes of data and it can upload, view, and search videos. I mean, at its base, that is what, what we've built does. Um, uh, 
um, I see in, in there's kind of like hints, I guess, in this question. It says components, clouds like AWS, OpenConnect, which acts as a content delivery network. Um, my experience with CDNs is, is limited, um, but I expect they behave in, in a similar way how I said it was like round robining um, and distributing our load so that we don't have a single, like we, we're not having a single copy of, of some video that is going to be become a hotspot when you're requesting it, right? That'll, that becomes the bottleneck. Um, the CDN should be doing things like uh, having multiple copies, um, being available in different regions. I'm not sure if they handle like multiple qual like quality video streaming quality levels, but something like that. Um, yeah, and I, I mean our data our database design is very very simple right now, um, but uh, you know, coming back to the requirements, at least they meet that. So we're at 41 minutes. Seems like a a decent start to this application.